Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know. Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no audio or the video, please do let me know guys. Good evening everybody, good evening. I hope that I'm live right now and you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video guys. Please do let me know. Great. So how are you guys? Thank you so much for asking Shant. I'm all fine. What about you guys? How are you? How was your day? Let me just switch on the light so that it's a bit more bright. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Okay. Fine. So everybody's day was good. Okay, that's that's amazing to hear, guys. That's amazing to hear. Okay, so can somebody let me know what have we studied in our previous uh, class, guys? Can somebody let me know what have we studied in our previous uh, class, guys? We saw deleting an element from an array, okay, as well as deletion of an element from a fixed and dynamic size ring. That's good, Sadna. Delete an element from an array and a vector. Okay, that's that's good. That's great. Okay, so that is what we are going to uh, do today as well. Okay, to, from today onwards, we are going to start with linked lists. Okay, we will try to understand what linked lists are and how to implement a linked list uh, in C++. Okay, these are the two things that we are going to see today. It would be fairly easy if you are able to understand arrays. Now, you wouldn't face any problems with linked lists. Okay. Okay, so everything else all good, sir. Please let me know. all good great okay uh, up till now i hope that everything was very clear to you guys you were not facing any issues or any problems at any point of time okay uh so it would be fairly easy for us to start off with our uh, linked list as well okay we'll be waiting for one more minute so that everybody who's late is able to join us as well okay and then we'll get started. Where is Suji? It's not Suji. Suji is like Suji ka halwa. Okay. Uh, it's Suzi. S-U-Z-I. So she is resting after her very hard works day. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So we'll be waiting for one more minute so that anybody who is late is able to join us and then we'll start immediately with linked lists. Uh, up to that point of time, does anybody has any idea with linked lists itself? Like, uh, does anybody have some idea what are linked lists or something like that? Can you guys let me know? If you don't have any idea, just write no in the live chat, okay? Studying it for the very first time, okay, no sir, heard about linked list for the very first time, no issues in that. Uh, recently, dynamic memory allocation was taught in my DSA class, that's great. 
linear data structure, non-continuous memory, that's good. Collection of nodes containing add data and address of the next node, great. No sir, no issues in that, we'll be learning about it. Uh, linked list uh, is a linear data structure, it stores data in non-contiguous memories, that's good. So what happened right over here? Okay, no issues in that. So let's get started right away guys with the class, okay? So let me just open up paint so that first we are able to understand linked list and then we are going to start with linked list as well. Okay, so up till now we saw arrays. Okay, we were trying to understand arrays itself. But uh, in arrays, the uh, memory that was uh, allocated right over there. Just give me a second guys. Just give me a second. Ashish? Naam note karte jara? Viraj Savalia S A V A L I Y A. Ah, it's called Kartara Dunge. Okay, so this got a distraction out of the class itself. Now we can focus upon the class. Okay, so right over here, uh, when we first learned about arrays, now with arrays, you had this concept of contiguous memory locations. Do you guys remember that? That the elements in the memory are stored at contiguous memory, uh, memory locations. Do you guys remember this? Please let me know, guys. Great. Now, this particular concept of contiguous memory location is what uh, this linear uh, linked list, okay. Linked list data structures wants to like uh, burden us of free. Like for example, arrays, every single element that was stored in an array was stored at contiguous memory location. This concept linked list does not want us to continue with. Linked list wants the elements to be at different memory locations there are some upsides for that but you won't be able to understand it right now when you go deep into linked list at that point of time you realize why linked lists are so important okay of course you can replace every single place wherever you are using arrays you can replace it with linked lists as well okay every single location where every single problem every single solution where uh, arrays can be used you can replace it by via linked lists as well so you would never face that problem okay now with linked list just like for example in the memory when uh, <clears throat> arrays was getting stored so for example you are having an array of 5 10 20 30 40 right over here then 5 would be stored f at 1000th memory location then 10 would be at 1004 20 would be at 1008 uh, 30 would be at 1012 okay 40 would be at 1016 because these are contiguous memory locations the same thing when stored in a linked list now a linked list has a particular node each node has two values associated with it. One is the value that is contained inside that particular node and then the address of the next node that it follows. So for example, if this exact same thing was re a linked list in that particular case, the first node, okay, so let me draw the node as in black. Okay, so this is your nodes as you're able to see. Okay, these are your nodes as you're able to see. Okay, so I'm drawing the nodes in black and the two parts of this node, the first part is basically your value that is 5, okay, so 5, 10, 20 are the values that are present in the node itself and the second part of the node, let me just draw a divide right over here so that it's very clearly visible to you guys. The second part of the node is the address of the next node. For example, 5 is present at the 1000th memory location, okay. But I don't know, like it, it's not that uh, I don't like uh, 10, okay, 10 at which particular memory location is 10th present. It's not fixed. Okay, it can be present anywhere. I'm just taking up a random example right over here. It can be present at the 
500th address okay 10 can be present at the 500th address so if 10 is present at the 500 address then this particular block of the first node it will contain 500 as its value that is the address of the next node so this basically acts like a pointer okay this basically acts like a pointer which points to the next node okay which points to the next node similar to that if 20 let's say 20 is present at the 4800 uh, address okay 20 is present at the 4800 ad, uh, address then after 10 in the second node you will be having the value as 4800 that is a pointer to the next value that is present in the leg list okay and then after that for example if this is where the uh, uh link list ends okay so we are having a link list of three nodes that is 5 10 and 20 if this is where it ends so this node will contain null okay this will contain null right over here that is it does not has any other node that is it is pointing to okay it does not has any other so this is where the link list ends okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know link lists are like chains okay it are links between different nodes okay that's the name suggests link lists okay it is links between different nodes each of the nodes contains the value and the pointer to the next node okay the value and the pointer to the next node what is a pointer guys a pointer basically refers to the uh like it basically carries the value of the address okay it carries the value of the memory location itself that means you are basically pointing to the next node okay are you because you are pointing towards the address of the next node are you guys able to understand this please do let me know Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. You guys are so smart. Okay. Now, uh, along with the link list, okay, it contains, it also contains another pointer called as the head pointer. Okay. It also has another attribute associated with it called as the head pointer that points to, okay, so this is called as head. Okay. It's again a pointer that points to the start of the link list itself. So head is another attribute that is associated with a link list that basically points to the start of the link list. So here the starting node of the link list is 5 and 500. Okay. Now these values 500, 4800. I have taken it at random okay 500 or 1000 or 4800 I have taken it at random we don't know where these numbers might be existing in our memory location okay that is how link list works okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this you guys are so smart I thought that I would have to teach this like two to three uh, times itself but you guys are very smart about it so structure of linked list how to define okay that is what we are going to see today Kushwa creations okay don't worry about it we are going to see how to construct a linked list from scratch in C++ so you don't have to worry about it because that is what we are here to learn we are here to learn about the basics we are here to learn about the implementations okay so you don't have to worry uh like worry about it so again just to recap link list what are link lists guys link lists are links okay it is basically chain of nodes that are there each of these nodes contain the value and the address to the next node that is the pointer to the next node so right over here it's it also has a head pointer that points the start of the node itself start of the link list itself so right over here head points to the starting node that is 5 comma 500 at the uh, position 500 because it's 500 at the position 500 you are having the next node as you're able to see that is 10 10 again contains another pointer that is 4800 that points to the next node that is 20 and as there is no node after 20 okay as there is no node after 20 you are having null at the end okay that is there's no pointer after that you are having null at the end that basically means your uh link list it has ended right over there okay as simple as that again like i am telling you guys again and again everywhere wherever you are using uh arrays you can replace it by link list anywhere that you are using arrays you can replace it by link list arrays or vectors anything that you are using at any point of time you can replace it by link list itself okay okay so uh, let's uh, get started and we'll see the implementation we'll try to understand the implementation for the same for that reason we are going to use something called as a structure in c++ to implement it now uh I'll, 
as i explained to you there are some components associated with a particular node okay so a link list is basically multiple nodes that you have to connect right over there Gaurav Salvi, did you not attend the uh, initial classes that were there, guys? Because I've already explained these addresses when we were talking about contiguous memory locations in uh, array. Okay. Why not class? Okay. So this is just for Anant. Okay. Because I'm able to understand most of the people that are present in the class don't know about classes. Okay. That sounded pretty abnormal, but yeah. This for Anand, just so that Anand is able to understand. Okay, Anand, why we are not using classes right over here is because class is associated with private uh, operations, public operations, uh, and all those kind of stuff. And you don't want to overcomplicate things right now. So we are just using struct where everything is public so that you are easily able to implement and use a node. Okay, class basically, you can implement it in class as well, but that will basically take things to be very complicated at the end then you will have when you are using a node in your like normal uh, span itself uh, linkless in your normal code itself it will just make the code very big okay and you don't want that at any point of time when you will be doing competitive programming as well you will usually be using a structure not a class okay yes but when you are implementing it in a project god forbid you are implementing it in a project then yes you will be using a class right over there if you are working in the industry okay but for the purpose of data structures algorithms and computer programming this is so for example when you are learning about nlp and all these kind of stuff uh nlm sorry uh natural language no, that's uh in machine learning sorry uh i forgot the full form of nlm uh do you guys remember the full form of nlm when you studied in uh, physics Newton's laws of motions. I, I don't know, like whatever that was. So when you were studying NLM, you usually used to like take everything as ideal and you used to just like use some formulas to do stuff. But that is not what happens in the real life. Okay. In real life, you have to take into action the coefficient of drag. You have to take into action the coefficient of friction and so on and so forth. Okay. It is not ideal that you assumed while you were studying for your uh, J mains and advance. Okay. The same thing happens right over here as well. When you are doing computer programming or data structures algorithms you are doing it for the one and only one purpose that is cracking coding interviews okay so in coding interviews that is your j means okay whatever you are learning right now you will be learning it for your j means itself that is your coding uh questions okay that is your coding interviews yes in the real life in the real world you won't be doing this okay you won't be doing this but our aim is not to know about the real life our aim is to first get into a company the company will be teaching you about real life okay so uh, yeah so let's get started right away uh, so right over here we will first start with creating a structure so let me just remove everything we'll keep the example and we'll remove the rest of the stuff from our page just making it look a bit nicer give me a second guys okay so right over here we are going to start with struct okay uh, struct we are creating a structure called as node okay because the building blocks of a link list is basically your nodes itself okay you are having different pearls and you are linking the pearls together with a thread so the same thing goes right over here as well okay you are having nodes you are linking the nodes using the addresses or the pointer that is present inside the node itself now you are so you will be creating the node first of all you want to create a data structure right over here you are creating your very own data structure called as node okay we are going to name it as node itself n o d e node okay now struct node that is what we are going to create right now now what are the two different components of this structure called as node okay what are the two different components of this structure called as node can node can you guys let me know what are the two different uh, components of this structure called as node? Can somebody let me know, guys? Just think about it. Data and the pointer. Value and the pointer. That's great. So value and the pointer, as you are able to see from each of these nodes. So this is the one drawn in the black box is called as a node. So it has a value, that is the data, and it has a pointer to the next node. Okay. So these are two components of a node. So first of all, this data structure should contain an int that is data okay 
that is the data that you want it to contain inside of it okay and then you want it to contain a pointer to the next node okay you want to it to contain the pointer to the next node itself so for that you want so it is a pointer but to the next node okay so you are creating a pointer of the type node okay you are creating a node pointer so node star ptr okay that is how you are able to create a pointer to the next node okay so please try to understand right over here the star basically means you are we want the address to be saved inside this pointer and this address is of the next node that is there okay the address is of the next node that is there so you are having these two components of this node int data that is the data it needs to contain and node star ptr we are naming it as ptr that is the variable name associated with the pointer to the next node okay you can also refer so more commonly when you are like creating a structure of a node you don't use ptr you use next because it points to the next uh, element the next node in the like linkage are you guys able to understand this okay are you guys able to understand this uh here you are pointing to the next node okay you are pointing to the next node okay that is the reason why we usually name this pointer as next okay we usually name this pointer as next right over here now once you have defined the two components that are there inside this structure called as node you need to mention how to initialize this node if you want to create a new node if you want to create a new node how will you do that okay if you want to create a new node how will you do that so creating a new node is pretty simple node and then the data point that you want to have because you cannot specify the address okay you cannot specify the address at any point of time now if you are having a single node if you are having just one node in a uh, linked uh, list okay how will it look like if you have just one node inside a linked list how would you it look like can somebody let me know if you have just one node inside the linked list just one okay what are the two things that it will contain can somebody let me know if you are having just one node inside the link list what are the two things that it will contain guys value and null that's absolutely clever guys value and null so if i'm having just one node that is present okay in that particular in the link list that will contain just two values that is first of all the value that it has let's say five and then because it is not pointing to anything else okay because it is not pointing there's no other node inside our link list so it will just contain inside of it null because it does not point to there's no next node okay there's no next node so i need to initialize this okay i need to create so every time i'm creating a node i will be creating it like this so how to do that so inside the structure itself i'm going to mention that for example i want to create a node so it will be node then the value of the node that is int x okay whatever value that i want to provide okay so this is how i will be initializing my node if this is what has been initialized by the user what will happen guys so i will be having data is equals to x okay whatever value that the user has given okay whatever value that the user has given right over here it will be assigned to data okay and then next that is next that is the pointer that we created right over here that will have a value of null inside of it that's it whenever you are creating a new node this is what will be created okay whatever value for example if i'm writing right over here node and then in parenthesis 5 then this is what it will be creating okay that is the value that is the data will be equal to 5 and the next uh, will be pointing to null itself okay are you guys able to understand this please uh, do let me know so so we can name it as ptr as well instead of next uh, like it will not create a problem no croc junior it will not create a problem but please remember then to use ptr every single time okay for example right over here you need to use ptr whenever we'll be using it in the uh, code itself you have to use ptr that is not like you can do it okay but that won't be the like nice like people will treat you as like less of a developer because you don't know the simple stuff that usually the pointer inside a link list is called as a like a uh, next okay so for example right now if i'm your name is let's say croc junior but if i'm referring to you, you as croc senior like that, that is just like i don't know you then okay i don't know you then i don't know your name okay that, that is a, you will feel that man he's not my friend he does not know anything about me that's the same thing that goes right over here there are some conventions that the industry has created and you need to follow them okay 
Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Uh, Draksh Agrawal, never ever in my bootcamp say, please repeat. If you're not understood something, type out the exact thing that you have not understood. For example, I was not able to understand like this, uh, like how I created a new node or something like that. Then type it out. Don't say I re repeat. Where should I repeat from? Like, hi, uh, are you able to hear me? Like, should I repeat it from right over there? Like, that does not make any sense. So, to save everybody's time, okay, always write what exactly are you not able to understand. Please let me know, Draksh Agrawal, what are you not able to understand? No issues with that. Croc, like, my, my basic concern is that you should know. Like, just think about it in such a way that... Uh, People, like all the developers around the globe has made some conventions. These are not rules. When you are breaking a rule, okay, when you are breaking a rule, you go to jail. But when you are breaking a convention, for example, directly like putting your mouth into the uh, plate and start eating it directly instead of using your hands or fork, people will think that you are an animal. You can do it. You can do it. But you will not be thrown into jail or anything. Just people will just make a convention that you should use your hands of sp uh, fork and spoon to eat but you are directly eating it like a dog so they will not think of you like an human being okay so that's the main thing with uh, names and variable names and all those kind of stuff in coding as well okay there are some conventions that have been made by the developers and we need to follow them okay just because we are a part of a group okay again no, the null one okay no issues in that so whenever we are creating any linked list at any point of time uh, the last node that is there okay because there is no node after this okay for example in this particular example you are having 20 and null right over here okay there is no node after 20 and null okay there's no node after 20 and null so where with this particular pointer point to it has nothing to point to so it points to null okay that is nothing it points to nothing okay so we write null right over there same if you are having just one node in the link list just one node in the link you are creating a new node this does not point to anything this does not point to anything so we have five that is the data and null right over here the same thing goes inside our code as well when we initialize a new node whenever we initialize a new node say node five right over here so data would be equal to x that is the value so data will be equal to 5 and next that is the pointer would be equal to null next as a pointer would be equal to null because it has no other node to point it to okay that is how you write this code are you guys able to understand this please do let me know are you guys able to understand this please do let me know uh let's go back to our code So value uh, node and uh, null node have continuous memory addresses. Yes, Kushwa, uh, because they are together. Only these two, because like you basically don't have them together. Like you just consider them together. Okay, like uh, in the memory, you, you just consider them as one node. You don't think about it as two separate memory uh, locations. Okay, usually that is the case. Yes, but just to for a matter of fact, yes, they are stored at contiguous memory location itself. Okay. Uh, so let me just open up, uh, what should I open up? C++ online compiler. Okay, so let's start it off with the uh, hash lude bits slash stdc plus plus dot h and using name space space std let's remove this i don't think so we require it uh let's remove this as well let's see if everything works out properly okay so let's start writing the same code right over here as well so we'll be creating our struct. Okay, please remember the S is small in struct. So S T R U C T struct right over here. We are going to call it as node. You can call it as anything, but the convention is when you are working with link list, you call it as the node itself. Okay, the node contains two particular aspects in data as well as your node star uh, next, that is your pointer to the next node. 
along with that you need a constructor so basically what i did the initialization that i did that is called as a constructor the technical term is called as a constructor so we are going to construct a node so because you are creating a fake node right over here so constructor node so node int x if that is what the user has provided us then data should be equal to x and next should be equal to null okay please remember null is always in capital okay null is always in capital so n u l l you have to place it in capital itself okay don't use anything else if you want to understand what hashtag include this means or using namespace std i have already put up a five and a half hour long video on our channel okay if you guys remember it youtube your channel videos so as you are able to see we have also started posting in java as well you could uh, go through that i need to find for c plus plus give me a second five and a half hour long video it should be relatively easy to find so we have already put up the entire video online for you guys it covers everything that you need to know in c plus plus okay right over here our basic uh like understanding is with the code itself whatever we are writing but if you guys are really interested to learn uh learning c plus plus in its entirety go through the entire video everything uh, has been explained right over there okay so please guys go through the entire video you will be able to understand everything it covers every single thing reference variables variables input output conditional statements loops operators uh, arrays strings uh, pointers and dynamic memory allocation pointer arithmetic pointer arithmetic mid sim arrays you are having object oriented programming you are having access specifiers you are having constructors and destructors you are having static members of a class you are having friend functions and friend classes inheritance you are having types of inheritances um multi path inheritance you are having your polymorphism function overloading operator overloading runtime polymorphism file handling then you are having another file handling you are having exception handling you're having templates in c plus plus you're having smart pointers and then you're having your lambda functions every single thing that you need to know in c plus plus has been put up in this particular video it has been taught by a particular post two people one is from cisco and the other one is from barclays so you guys will be able to understand everything very well okay you will not have any problem right over there Okay, sir, I've seen the whole video, but does not start from the structure of a C++, uh, but every other info is given. So structure isn't something. So structure comes up when you are basically working with lingless trees or something like that. So that is data structures and algorithms. Okay, because you are working with structure, you're creating a structure, data structure itself. So that is the reason why this basically covers everything that you need to know in C++ about C++ that can be asked to you in any interview. Any interview that you go, if you are using C++ as your programming language of choice, this video covers everything for you guys. Okay, so you can definitely go ahead and complete it. Let's go back to our coding. So right over here, we have created our structure. Okay, we have created our structure right over here. So let's now start with implementing our first link list. Okay, creating our very first link list right over here. So let's try to do that. The first node that we'll be creating. What will be the name of that node, guys? Can somebody let me know? The first node of a link list. What will be the name of that particular node? Can somebody let me know? Can somebody let me know what will be the name of the first node that I will be creating? That's absolutely clever, guys. Head. I told you the first node of the link list is called as a head itself. So let's create our very first node right now. So node star head is equals to new node. 10. that will create us a node that has 10 as the first like data point and the next pointer points to null okay the next pointer points to null and that node has the name of head okay that node has the name of head now the rest of the node we can just name it as anything that we want we are going to take up the name as temp1 okay that is basically like not a temporary node one okay so temp one itself so let's create the next node node star uh, temp one is equals to new node 20 
let's have like three nodes inside of right over here so node star temp 2 is equals to new node 30 right over here and then uh so you have created these three nodes so what you have done up till this point of time is that you have created these three nodes right over here let me just draw it for you guys so you are having the first node the second node the third node okay these are the three nodes that you have created okay now ooh, my eardrum started hurting i don't know why so the first node you are having the name as head the second node you are having the name as temp1 the third node that you have created has the name of temp2 okay these are the uh, pointers that you have created the values that you have put up inside the node let us write that you are having your 10 you are having your 20 you are having your 30 right over here and of course the next point is basically all of them points to null okay because you haven't made any particular pointing system up till this particular point of time so this is what you have created using these three lines of code okay node star head is equals to new node 10 node star temp 1 is equals to new node 20 node star temp 2 is equals to new node 30 so this has created these three nodes for you now what do we want to do okay where should this particular pointer point to can somebody let me know where should this particular pointer point to. can somebody let me know that uh can somebody let me know where should the pointer the next pointer of the head uh node should be pointing to guys that's correct hitesh joshi temp one okay this pointer should be pointing to temp one let me take up another color from right over here uh shit which color should, should let's take a brown this pointer should point to temp 1 this pointer should point to temp 2 and the last pointer should like again remain at null now this particular pointer points to temp 1 as you are able to see this and this both the pointers are pointing to the same address so basically it can point to temp 1 as well this particular pointer should be pointing to temp 2 right over here so uh let us try to like implement it via code right over here it's extremely simple you just need to draw a pointer literally you need to draw a fucking pointer out here here so head okay head uh next okay the next of head okay the next that is present inside of head should be equal to temp one okay the next of head should be equal to temp one okay similar to that temp one next okay the pointer of next okay the uh, next present in temp one should be pointing out to temp two right over here and temp three we don't need to like do anything okay we don't need to do anything about temp t uh, uh sorry temp two can uh, temp three can somebody let me know why we don't need to do anything about temp three guys can somebody let me know why so how to decide uh like we want to create a like linked list we know that the first element is 10 the second is 20 and the third is 30 that is a problem statement so head is basically a pointer to the uh, 10 temp 1 is the pointer to 20 and temp 3 is the temp uh, 2 is the pointer to 30 so that is why sorry temp 2 guys temp 2 why uh, why do we not have to do anything with temp 2 can somebody let me know why don't we have to like do anything with temp 2 because it already has null value if you go to the thing okay it already has a null value and that is the end of our linked list that is the end of our linked list there's no other node after that that's absolutely clever uh kichu star there's on uh, like after that there's nothing right over there so uh but sir all the pointers are null how they should be connected uh so just take up an example if you are writing a is equals to three if you're writing at any point of time a is equals to three then i'm again writing a is equals to four isn't that three replaced with four okay what is the new value of a guys what is the value that will be contained inside of a if a was equal to three before now i'm writing a is equals to four what will be the value that will be present in a like it will be changed to four am i right so even though it was first containing even though the next pointer was basically first containing null but if i'm reassigning it then that value is gone the same thing that applies to right over here as well as simple as that okay no it cannot be randomly accessible but yes uh, linked lists are dynamic in size 
Okay, so are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. And now we can easily print it out as well. So see out less than less than uh, head. You want to access the data of head. So just pointer to the point to the data right over here. Then uh, let's put up an arrow right over here. So let's put up an arrow. And again, less than less than temp one data less than less than let's put up another arrow right over here temp2 the data you want to access the data out of temp2 uh, less than less than and then again uh, arrow less than less than none okay so we can run this particular code let's see what happens a struct definition okay i forgot to put up the semicolon after the struct definition so please remember that uh, guys after you have defined the struct we need to put up a semicolon at the end as well so please don't forget it like i did so let's run it once again as you are able to see we have created our very first link list okay 10 20 30 and then null are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys now it is not compulsory to basically use this temp1 temp2 again and again okay it just looks very like tedious to write like every single time i need to create a new node i'm just like writing temp1 then temp2 then temp3 then temp4 like this becomes so big at the end of the day so what can i do about it can i do something about it okay so actually there is like instead of doing it like this what can be done is actually we can replace this okay we can replace this as head next as equals to new node 20 head next next is equals to new node 30 and then right over here as well you can replace temp1 by head next and temp2 by head next next so what is happening right over here guys what is happening right over here so if i go and draw this out okay if i go and draw this out right over here i will I, first of all i've just removed every single temp one that was present at any point of time okay i've just removed it so what is okay and let's remove the null as well from right over here we don't require null we don't require null it's just a pointer that points to the next field okay so what i've done right over here is what is the next of head okay so what i've done is that i've written head next should point out to this new node 20 the next of head okay the next of head should point out to the, this is new node 20 itself and when i'm writing so once that has been created the next line of code is so this has been created guys this has been created so you are having so after this particular line of code what we are having is something like this okay after this particular line of code what we are having is something like this you're having null written right over here n u l l this is what we have created after this particular line that the next of head should be pointing to a new node that is 20 right over here now what you want to do is you are writing after this the next code line that you are writing is head next that basically means the second node that you have created 20 comma null okay that should point to the next to that okay the next of the next node so basically the next node of 20 should be equal to the new node 30 so instead of using this temp okay you are doing it manually right now okay instead of doing it 10 you are doing it directly so you don't have to write like the entire thing again and again you can directly do it and this next will point out to the new node that is 30 are you guys able to understand this 
to access the access to the 20 node okay to access the this node the code is head the next okay that is the next node of head okay that is the next node of head okay after head what is the next node okay after head what is the next node just think about it normal english okay head next what is the next node of head 20 okay what is the next node after head 20 okay head next that is 20 head next that is 20 we already know that what is the next node of that that is 30 okay the next node of uh, 20 is basically 30 so that is just think about it as normal english to think about it as normal english itself you will be able to understand this are you guys able to get this please do let me know guys are you guys able to get this please do let me know guys yes that's absolutely clever uh neeraj slab okay uh you are correct are you guys able to understand this so that is how you are easily able to create a link list this is how you are able to create a link list are you guys able to understand please do let me know Uh, when we want 10, 30, 20, what do we do? So just go back, change the code right over here. So 10, 30, 20, and that's it. You are able to do it. Can you start? That is how you will be able to do it because that's just the data. You can change the data. Okay. You can change the data to whatever you want. Okay. I can have it like 10, 500, 600, 800, uh, zero. I can put it up in any direction. It's not always like 10, 20. That was just an example. The data can be X, Y, Z. Okay. Are you guys able to, uh, can you, are you able to understand? Okay, that's great. Okay, so let me just like run this. Let's see if it works or not. As you're able to see, we are getting 10, 30, 20, and then null right over here. It's uh, Daksh Agrawal, it's just a value. It can be anything. It can be decimal, it can be negative, it can be positive. It's just a value. A value can be anything. It can be a string as well. I don't care about it, okay? It's a value right over there, okay? Just make sure that if you're putting up a string, then you have to change the data to string as well. Please do not uh, like forget about it. Okay, the int data. So right now the data is in integer. If you want to put up string, you have to change it to string. Okay. Rock Jr. Like I said, the header file, I've already told you if you want to learn, we have already posted a video for that. It's a five and a half hour long video. If you just want to learn about headers, you can just go to the headers section in that video and you will be able to learn it properly. Okay. In decimal two. Okay. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Okay. So right now I will show you the attendance link for today guys. Give me a second. Today in Bangalore, I feel a bit like it's a bit hot than usual. Like usually it's very cool in Bangalore. I don't know why, but I feel the need of switching on the fan or something like that. Okay. We are at C++ day five. Yes, you can do it with decimals as well. The how many times will I have to repeat myself? So it's day five right over here. Day five here as well. Why the fuck would you want it in C language? Harshit, C language is just for your college and nowhere else. And no pro, uh, no company is going to ask you C. Okay, none of the companies who are coming to your placements or even after that as well is going to ever ask you anything related to the C language. C is just language that is taught in your colleges because your college syllabus is pretty outdated. Okay. That is the only reason why people learn C. No, nothing else. C is an outdated language. It is not going to help you. If you want to do data structures, algorithms or computer programming for interview preparation for any company that you are approaching for choose C plus plus or Java. Don't go forward with any other language guys. Okay. Yeah, Linux is uh, Unix is designed and see, are you going to fucking design Unix once again? Like it's the same thing as telling that, okay, the first wheel that was made out was of stone. So let's like, let's leave uh, learning about alloys. Let's leave learning about metallurgy. Let's go back, build the entire car in stone. Let's do that. Okay. C is the basics. That is why I'm saying that it's only for your college examinations. 
I have been taking up uh, like interviews for almost twenty twenty five different colleges. I have placed almost four thousand eight hundred nine hundred students up till now in the past one year. Okay, in companies like Microsoft, Google, Atlassian, every single company that I can dream of, I have sat with them in their interviews as well. In the past two months, I like some seven of my students got placed into Google with a package of sixty lakhs. I invited them to Bangalore. We had a great party as well. At the end, they asked me to pay for it, and I was like, "Fuck it!" Like you guys are earning much more than me. You guys are going to pay for the same. So that's the thing. Like in any interviews, C is never going to be asked. C is only taught as a subject in your college, in which you need to attain marks. You don't need to learn it separately. Whatever the professors are teaching, that is more than sufficient. If you want to get into a good company, there are only two languages that you have to learn. Only two languages. Don't go fucking learning like fifty, sixty different languages. There's no use of that. Just two language. In data structures, algorithms, and computer programming, choose between C plus plus or Java. None of the other languages. Any other language? So what about this? So what about that? I don't fucking care. Okay, you asked for my opinion. I gave you my opinion. I personally prefer C plus plus, but you have the option for Java as well. C P and D S A only in C plus plus or Java. Now after that, in development side, if you are planning to go into data science, okay, then you have only one choice: Python. Okay, if you are planning to go into web development, then you are only having one choice: that is JavaScript. You don't have to do data structures, algorithms, and computer programming in Python or JavaScript. You have to make projects. These are development language. Okay, you have to do projects in these languages for data science, Python, for web development, JavaScript. That's it. Whatever you choose, you have to do only two languages: one for development and one for data science, algorithms, and computer programming. Like I said, don't do anything else. Okay, this is the shortest path and the most efficient path possible. Okay. Uh, we'll be talking about this tomorrow onwards as well. Tomorrow I'll be taking some time explaining you what this entire hiring. Now, one of the best things that I like, worst things that I know about the Indian students is that they don't know shit about coding interviews. Like they are just bowling it according. Like they think that they know everything. Dude, like I've given almost like hundred interviews in my entire lifetime. I've taken up twenty twenty five different interviews for different companies in my lifetime. I know a lot, so I will be explaining you like what should be the best possible path moving further. Don't worry about it. Okay, I will be talking about it tomorrow. But please, guys, don't do C. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't do C. Okay. I uh, don't learn coding from books. Okay, like of course, like at a later point of time when you want to dive deep into the language, you usually prefer books. But never learn coding from books. Okay, learn coding as much as possible, like by doing it on your own. Okay, just like do it on your own. It's all about practice. It's not about the theory. It's all about how much you are able to practice at the end of the day. Okay, so let me just create the attendance thing for you guys. we'll be talking about placements and how to like proceed further what are the different types of projects that you should be working upon all these different things we'll be talking about tomorrow guys so don't worry about it okay uh for data structures and algorithms if you need a book then go with nasima rao's data structures and algorithms it's the best book that is there okay don't go for languages don't go for languages via books okay you don't need to learn the entire fucking language like What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't do that. Okay, start with data structures, algorithms slowly and steadily. When you are comfortable in that language, then go with like learning about the language at a later point of time. Because learning about the language, you are actually doing it to just crack the interview itself. What is much more important is data structures, algorithms, and computer programming. Okay, the language itself, you are just doing it like there will be like twenty, twenty-five, thirty different types of questions that are associated with C plus plus. Don't go with a book. In book, you have to give almost like two to three weeks or even a month to go through a thick fat book. Okay, you don't have that kind of time to waste around. Give that time to data structures, algorithms, and computer programming. Just sit one day with your pen and paper, go through the C plus plus video. Every single other question that is going to be asked in the interview has been covered right over there. Don't waste your time on unnecessary stuff. Okay, so it's the same with J mains and advanced as well. If you are wasting your time doing something shitty, then you are not going to get into an IIT or an NIT. You will go with some tutti college that is there at any point of time. Okay, you are not going into bits. You are not going to into IIT or NIT. Going into some tutti college with some tutti placements. You don't want that at any point of time. 
by dirty i mean shitty if somebody does not understand said okay the same goes with coding interviews as well if you're not putting on the right efforts if you're not putting on the right time for the right stuff okay then you will be going with either some like small scale company that offers you like 30000 25000 a month or if you're paying up the good amount of time you're putting up efforts in the right direction then you will be ending up going into google at a package of 60 lakhs per annum that's a huge amount of money for anybody as a pressure just coming out of college like you can go and book your own house on the very first day don't waste time guys okay okay so let me just uh, i've shown you the attendance so we'll be meeting tomorrow guys once again uh tomorrow i will be going through everything okay about placements and everything don't worry about it uh but yeah we'll continue from right over there thank you so much guys thank you